Sunday morning. I think we're all a little bit better off than Julie. She's camping. Both here and in all your churches throughout the world, O oh Christ, we adore you, because on your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Our opening hymn is hymn number 374, verses 1, 2, and 3. Alleluia, sing to Jesus. You need to use your hymn books. And you need to use your blue hymn books.
sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your mother and name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is in his holy temple. O come, let us worship. And let us say to the Nighty together, Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the thousands of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down with men and knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his tent. Oh, let today you have hearkened to his voice. And we'll also say the Jubilee together. Be joyful in the Lord, all lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God, and he himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, Call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Please be seated for the proclamation of the Lord. A reading from the book of Exodus. Now a new king arose over Egypt, who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase, and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to oppressed them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Python and Ramses, for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field of labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one whom was named Shifra, and the other Hua, when you act as midwives, midwives to the Hebrew women and see them in birth stool, 
If it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt with well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let live every girl. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could not hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitum and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of the pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying, and she took pity on him. This must be like the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. And when the child grew up, she brought him to the Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because, she said, I drew him out of the water. This is the word of the Lord. Our psalm is Psalm 124, and the refrain is, Our help is in the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel now say, If the Lord had not been on our side, when enemies rose up against us, then would they have swallowed us up alive in their fierce anger towards us. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us and the torrent gone over us. Then would the raging waters have gone right over us. Blessed be the Lord. He has not given us over to be a prey for their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Last week we learned that God had not rejected his people because God's promises are irrevocable. Today we continue to read Romans 12, verses 1 to 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your ritual, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds. <coughs> So that he may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For, for as in one body we have been many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ. 
an individual group. We are members. Uh, we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith. Ministry and ministry. <coughs> Teacher and teaching. The exhorter in, in exhortation. The giver in generosity. The leader in diligence. The compassion in cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. The gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the key, keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations be to the glory of our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So Jesus asked Peter, Who do you say that I am? And he had just finished speaking to the crowd, and he was asking Peter what people said of him. And now he wants to know what Peter says. Let's put ourselves there in front of Jesus instead of Peter. Who do you say that I am? Jesus asks. What do we say? If we answer like Peter, then we are answering the call, and God will expect us to carry on the work of Jesus. All through the ages, people have been where Peter stood, and many have answered the call. I will name but a few, but there is one that I want to talk about today. A mystical renaissance is at work in our world, a vibrant yet subtle grace. People everywhere are invited to be in a joyful and deeply emotional relationship with God. Some of these people who felt it and answered to it, to it are Henry Nouwen, Thomas Merton, St. Francis of Assisi, Mother Teresa, St. John the Evangelist, and St. Catherine of Siena, and Julian of Norwich. And the person that I want to speak about today is Julian of Norwich. And we're still in August, so we're given leeway from Reverend Lee to talk about saints. Um, so I said if uh, I were to speak more than once, because I already did St. Francis of the CC, that I would do Julian of Norwich. Um, so I don't think we know when she was born. We do know when she died, and I forgot to write in the date, but if anybody wants to know, I'll look at her. Some books say she was married, and that when her husband died, that she decided to become the anchoress of the church, of the St. Julian Church in Norwich. She drew her strength from devotion to prayer, self-examine, and contemplation. She knew daily time alone with God to look on her day, and the well-being and harmony of her soul was required. Julian and other mystics were contemplatives. Julian and other mystics or contemplatives knew that God expected a lot from them. He was their closest, most intimate companion. They knew the divine through direct experience, not from discussion or reading, only through time and prayer and communion with God. Now that didn't make her life easy. It didn't clear the road for her for a smooth journey. No one can avoid the hardships of life. And she knew hardships and loss and pain. The main road by where she lived, in her seclusion at the church in Norwich, it was a busy port. And um, sorry, and she would have witnessed many plagues as ships brought in different diseases. There was bad weather, 
and spoiled crops which caused famine. The Hundred Years' War was raging. There was a lot of dissension in the church at that time, with three popes competing. It is the time of John Wycliffe and his followers calling for reform in the church, for which they would have been marched by her window down that road that was next to the church, to a place in town where they were burned as heretics. She may have been walled up, but it wasn't in an ivory tower. So Julian asked for three things from God. One was to remember his passion in a special way, not to suffer as he did, but to feel it as a bystander during his time of passion and execution. The second, was to suffer a great illness so dire that she and all others would think that she were to die from it. She wanted this so she could feel that she passed over and would be able to devote her life entirely to the glory of God. And the third was to receive three wounds. The wound of contrition, the wound of passion, her longing of her will for God. These three wishes were granted, and then she spoke of her illness in her showings. She was granted the witness of Christ's passion, and she spoke of it clearly and deeply. The three wounds she received helped her share her relationship with others. Julian of Norwich is an example of a healthy soul. Her love of God, the joy she felt in her experience with him, was paramount. Her near-death experience became a conversion experience, as it does with many who endure such a thing. Any new near-death experience is a stripping away of the old life and a beginning of a new, uncluttered existence. It resembles our baptism to the old life and resurrection to a new life with our baptism and hopefully continues for the rest of our lives. In St. Julian of Norwich's day, as well as today, it is hard to see clearly the good news of the Bible because Christians have so cluttered it up with our traditions, it is hard at times to see it as liberating. The liberation comes in in the resurrection. Julian's encounter with God put things into perspective for her. She trusted that God was truly revealing himself to her. And while Julian never argues with the masculinity of God, she also sees him from the feminine perspective. Christ nourishes us like a mother. Jesus spoke of himself in the feminine when he talked about himself gathering us under his wings as a hen would gather her chicks. <coughs> Julian spoke of God's great courtesy his courtesy makes him supremely respectful of us, patient with us in our failings, considerate of our freedoms. It makes God incredibly appealing and close to us. And how could we not love God, who is so congenial with us? And while sin is very real for Julian, through her deep and personal experience with God, she believes all will be well. She struggles with the church's view of the damned, but she does not deny that some will be, but she also trusts that Christ has all things in hand and will bring the good out of all things. The Catholic Church teaches the existence of hell 
and that we are given freedom of choice. God would not make us go to his kingdom against our will. So it would be hard to believe that anyone would ever make the choice of denying the power of love. Julian tells us to think of ourselves as children, infants, and what we do as infants. Our mother helps us, gets us cleaned up, and showers us with hugs and kisses, and sends us on our way. This is our humility in front of him, and our humility is God's strength. Julian also gives us joy. So much of the Christianity is sour faced and acting all gloomy, yet the gospel is good news. God so loved us that he came as a baby, a human in form, and to die for us, to show us supreme love, a love so deep he would be willing to get on that cross and die a horrible death for us. And she may have been an anchor shut away in her rooms, but those rooms opened up to that busy street in a busy town. She reminds us to wake up and smell the roses, and for me, the coffee. Her love of creation in human society fills her with her work. She is overjoyed with her life, and her joy is contagious. And it overflows from her small rooms to all who came to her. We could be sure, we could sure use some of her enthusiasm graciousness and her ecstatic voice in this ancient, anxious world we live in today. All will be well, and all will be well, and all manner of things will be well. Thanks be to God. Amen. Stand and join us in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified by God. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our offertory hymn is hymn number 649, Breathe on Me, Breath of God.
We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As you are comfortable, let us pray. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all people according to their need. Our response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. who passed away this week, our de deepest sympathies to the family. Heavenly Father, thank you for Peter. He was so very human, and yet you gave him faith to confess Jesus as your Son and Messiah. As you used him, please use us to do your work of forgiving, confessing, and proclaiming Jesus as the Lord to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Establish the church upon the solid rock of Christ and on the faithful witness of your apostles. Make the church truly the one body of Christ upon this earth. Do not let the gates of hell prevail against his faithful pro proclamation and teaching. By your Holy Spirit, Make it wise, gracious, and steadfast in rightly forgiving and retaining sin. Use it to bring many to faith in Jesus their Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep safe your servants who are persecuted for naming Jesus as Christ and God. Visit them with your righteousness and draw near with your salvation. That our words and deeds never tarnish their witness. We also pray for missionaries, seminaries, and theologians entrusted with the proclamation of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Conform this congregation to your good, acceptable, and perfect will. Help us to not think too highly of ourselves, but with sober judgment to use our talents according to the grace that you have given each of us. Build up the body of your beloved Son among us through, sounding, through sound preaching and teaching, generous giving, cheerful service, and loving kindness. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all those who have instructed and shaped our faith, our parents, grandparents, pastors, Sunday school teachers, and everyone whose love for Jesus shines brightly in word and deed. Thank you for the saints whose confession of Jesus as Lord has been a blessing to others and has formed the unseen foundation of our own faith. Use us to encourage, instruct, and guide others in lives of discipleship and service to your glory and for the building up of your people. Lord, in your mercy, teach the world's rulers to listen to you, the giver of justice and the author of salvation. Conform their decisions and deeds to your righteous will, so that they care for the lowly and give hope to all who cry out to you. Heal the divisions that fracture families, communities, and nations, and help us to live at peace with our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all who risk their lives to protect, defend, and rescue others. Give them valor, loyalty, wisdom, and competence. Help them to act according to your will and for the benefit of your people. Heal their wounds. Reunite them swiftly with loved ones and crown their labors 
with the blessings of your peace. Lord, in your mercy, Graciously answer the prayers of all who call upon you for help. We raise the names of Bill Colburn, Ruth Miles, Siobhan Lees, Sharon Sear, Nancy Marcotte, Karen Jeffrey, Dave Mark Hugley, the Reverend Bill White, Debbie Grant, Evan Crow, Jerry Austin, Rachel Bate, Debbie Parker, Chuck Jackson, Wayne Burry, Cecil Hughley, Douglas Byburn, Randy McDonald, Bob Austin, Brian Kelly, John McLean, Bob Shaw, Sean, Philip, Georgina, Lisa, Shannon, and Teresa. Be their shade and shelter, Heavenly Father. Give hope to their hearts, health to their bodies, confidence to their minds, and faith to their souls. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all those who have departed this life, that they may be at peace, resting in your holy embrace, and that they have a place with all the saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for your holy churches throughout the world, that they may truly and humbly serve you, Lord, that we may be one and your name be glorified by all people. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Hong Kong Shen Hung Quiet Church. In our diocese, of, in our own diocese, our cycle of prayer, we pray for Rodden and Christ Church in Windsor, Nova Scotia. And in the Pictou County Council of Churches, we pray for the First United Baptist, New Glasgow. And we pray for St. Andrew's Cole Harbor, our Anglican ACW prayer partner. Gracious Father, your love endures forever. In your mercy, draw near and make good your purpose for us. Keep us steadfast in faith, bold in witness, generous in sharing, cheerful in helping, gentle in exhorting, frequent in forgiving, and constant in thankfulness to you, our rock and our salvation. Lead us into the presence of Christ, our Lord. Give to us all to whom he has redeemed eternal joy and gladness thanksgiving, and the voice of song. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, Heavenly Father, and transform us through them, that we may have eyes to see and hearts to understand, not only what you do on our behalf, but what you call us to do. Amen. Amen. The collect for today. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and the light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love, joy, and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all hope in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, the announcements, some of the announcements are in your bulletin, but I will remind everybody that next Sunday, September 3rd, imagine that, September already. It's not very long till you know what that day will be. Anyway, September 3rd, our, it's a combined service, and it's at St. B's in Westville. And in standing good Anglican tradition, there will be a lunch afterwards. So please, and it's at 10 o'clock in the morning, so please, mark that on your calendar and show up. Um, Bible and Brew, the second Wednesday of every month, is a standing place, which is um, Andre's Pizza Seats. Loretta is leading that. So if you're interested, and it's always, the discussion is always on the following Sunday's Gospel. So if you want to brush up on your Gospel and talk about it before it's, it's uh, preached on Sunday, and uh, that what a wonderful way to uh, find out if a preacher knows what they're talking about, because you already discussed it on Wednesday night beforehand. And you get to eat, or drink, or tea, coffee, water, or fruit. I thought I'd toss that in in case sanitizes anybody. <laughs> and we have a box down in the back. <laughs> um, Nancy Terrace has been doing this for a very long time. She was providing snacks on a Wednesday night for the uh, fifth floor of the palliative care unit at the hospital because they don't serve snacks after supper. So it's nice for those people that need that little, you know, cookie or you know peanut butter and crackers or whatever that they can have that so yeah, the Anglican churches of Victor County have taken the initiative to try to bring things in and place in the box and we take it over to Nancy and she distributes it to the hospital that's what we do here but there's and the other churches take it themselves so that um, the Anglican churches of Victor County have been doing a fantastic job of outreach on in this mission we need a volunteer to take the book to Nancy. Thank you. Okay, and do you have something to say? Yes, we'll be starting back up our quilting uh, out in St. Peace. Uh, we don't have a firm date, but it was Mondays? <laughs> yes, it was. It was Mondays at 6 o'clock. Um, so I have to talk to the powers out there that just to see when we'll, when we'll be doing it for sure. But it was great fun. And we ate as well. And I think now there's another <coughs> Oh, the school supplies. When are we taking that over? It'll be after we start Okay, so we also have an initiative. We're busy people, aren't we? We also have an initiative to um, supply the children that need, in need, I guess, of school supplies. So, you know, loose leaf, pencils, <coughs> erasers, backpacks, whatever, whatever. I'm, I think Loretta mentioned at one point it was 39 cents for a packet of loose leaf. So if you can uh, see it in your budget or have that in your budget, if you could uh, purchase one of those and maybe bring it for, it won't be next Sunday because we are away, so the following Sunday, so the 10th of September, and then we'll take it to them 
after that. It's a great outreach. And I don't know if you've been watching the news or not, but there was uh, 280 children in need of food, breakfasts, and things in Halifax, and that has increased to 400 and something. There was one outreach in Halifax gave out uh, 400 backpacks for kids, and backpacks and supplies for kids, and they had to turn people away. There was still another couple of hundred that they had to turn away. So there is a need there for it. If you can, like I, guess, like I said, find it in your budget at all. Um, Bridge County and Shore is no different than Halifax. And on that note, I think I've talked long enough, so I'm going to let someone else say something. I, I just wanted to 